Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Diane and today we're going to paint a simple little cornucopia or horn of plenty. I'm doing it in line and wash and it's quick and easy and ideal as a gift, a card or an invitation. So grab your paints and let's get started. So I don't know at the moment how this is going to turn out as usual. Um, I'm going to do a cornucopia for Thanksgiving, which would be perfect for an invitation if you were sending out invitations to a meal, or you could use it for a card or a gift tag or something like that. Um, and I'm going to draw it in pen. I'm going to use my Stettler pigment liner and I'm using uh, not a very big piece of paper here. I think this is about uh, six by nine, maybe less than that. I haven't got it. I never have a ruler handy when I want one. Um, yeah, that's six by, well, that's six by 10. So there we are. And um, yeah, so I'm going to start off by drawing the cornucopia and then I'm going to watercolor it um, with some, obviously with some paint. So you can see the whole of that and let's get started. Now, the trick of this is to start with the contents of the cornucopia. So um, I think I might just use a pencil to give myself <clears throat> some guidelines uh, to start with. So let's imagine that that's the edge of the table. And um, then let's imagine that uh, inside the cornucopia, of course, traditionally, we always have a good old pumpkin. So I think we've had plenty of practice drawing pumpkins lately. More than enough, really. Um, but anyway, as uh, Denise said, how many times can you draw a pumpkin? Uh, well, <laughs> but thank you, Denise, for the idea of um, doing a cornucopia video. So we'll do that. And I'm going to put a, a bigger one behind, a tall one like this, which maybe it might have stripes on it. The same kind of idea. Okay, so that gives me my basis. So I can come in and, and start doing that with the ink so you can see it so much better. And um, here comes the cat. I like to, when I do ink <coughs> <coughs> drawings, um, I'm a sketchy ink drawer. I'm not a straight line joined up. I don't do much in the way of joined up thinking. So um, you can follow my lead if you like, or else obviously there are lots of other ways that you can do this. Um, what was I going to say? You'll be able to, if you want to, you can have the sketch, uh, which will be on our website. So um, we've got the two pumpkins there, and um, there's so many things that you could do. And so we could put, uh, let me see, what shall we do? Um, we could have, what did I do in my sketch? I had another little pumpkin behind, which is going to have a different uh, color. So we have another little one there. And then I'm going to put um, an ear of corn here. So that's going to come up like that with its... Like that, and obviously, needs its, uh, what do you call them, kernels. And then we could have some leaves coming out from the side here, so. And I was thinking maybe we could have some, some grapes. So we'll just build up a bunch of grapes like that, something like that coming out there. And then we might have, um, I don't know, let's have an apple. And uh, maybe a maple leaf there. And this is the sort of thing that you can just put whatever you fancy. And we could have a an ear of um, 
Arlie or something like that coming up there. A couple of them. Okay, maybe, uh, what should we have here? Just some berries, perhaps. could have another leaf here, perhaps, to break that line. Okay, and then now is when you put the, cork, the horn in. So we draw a circle, the opening of the horn, coming round like that. And we're going to, obviously, it's going to have like that and then uh, we're going to it's going to be up here somewhere I need a pencil just in case it would be really sweet to have a little bird on here. Singing. Maybe another corn cob here, perhaps. And you can, you know, this is where you just use your imagination. And should we put a little pear here? And then we can write up here, give thanks give thanks and praise. So I've got my uh, one of my old paint boxes here and I've just activated everything. It's been sitting here for a while, um, but I think it should work. So this is quinacridone gold. Arthur's just come to, to play. Yeah, quinacridone gold. So for that particular pumpkin, and maybe, maybe we'll add a little red. And then um, this one here, we want to make that a good orange, don't we? So if I go to the quinacridone and then some red and really make it orange. This is um, this would be cadmium red mixed with quinacridone gives us a nice a nice colour. I could put a little bit of it down here as well. Oh, right, Arthur, it's not for you. Um, then for the basket, we want a beige colour, really, don't we? But not too, not too, not too dull. And we'll just pop that in. And of course, the shadow um, 
inside here is going to be kind of grey, so we've just mixed. Um, what did I mix there? Uh, that would have been blue, so that would have been ultramarine and um, burnt sienna, probably, most likely, to get that grey. We can use some of that as well for a little bit of shadow on the on the basket. And uh, this pumpkin, <clears throat> some of them have kind of green, don't they? Um, sort of greenish kind of stripes. Let's make that a bit greener. Now here's a pair, make that one uh, green pair. <coughs> and uh, this is supposed to be an apple. So we'll make that red on one side. And green on the other. I put in the stalks. And so we mix up some red with some blue to make some purple for the grapes. Leave a bit of light there. And then we can put a bit more dark in. wait for that to dry and then we can sh sharpen that up a little bit and then the corn which is pretty bright yellow really let's use two different yellows some red berries down here. I'm not sure what they are, but I'm sure the birds will enjoy them. <clears throat> While I've got red on the brush, I'll do the, the breast of the robin. these maples yellow first and then we'll just drop in some quinacridone gold and some burnt sienna and these leaves are nice beech leaves which are kind of orange orangey brown this one because it's on top of the darker sorry the orange pumpkin needs to be nice and brown We've got some, some corn over here, which ought to be yellow. And then we just want a kind of neutral colour for the shadow underneath if we want to put a background, but of course you don't you don't need to if you don't want to.
and come back after come back to the actual horn and put in a few more strokes just to give it a bit more shape and stick to the raw sienna that was that color was raw sienna Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and come back and see whether it needs any extra touches. Probably might want to put some shadow on the corn. Okay, so this is now dry and I have a cup of coffee with me now, so we will uh, just uh, take a look and see where we need to improve this. Bring my water a little bit closer. Um, so I just really want to intensify some of the colours a little bit. Add a little bit more red to the apple there. And um, this green-ish one here, I think I just want to put some a little bit more. You know the kind of pumpkin I'm thinking of that has kind of stripy lines that kind of thing um, okay and now the corn I just put a few little variations in color on there just to it's not exactly Indian corn kind of all those mixtures, but just a little bit of variety. Um, our maple here has gone a little bit dull as it's dried, so we'll add a bit more quinacridone and, and hopefully that will brighten up a bit. It's only trouble with watercolour, it does tend to dry lighter. Than, uh, than it is when you put it on, so you can't always tell what you're going to get. And then on these um, grapes, I'm going to come in with some dark blue. I think it's probably indigo, or it could be, uh, even you could use black, and just put some shadow behind some of these rather sketchy grapes. want to make them look too solid um, and then we've got up here there was some ears of corn so I think that I then I might now just add a few extra lines with pen if I can find it what did I do with my pen I'll get another one a little bit bigger and put some as we got honest I think I'm gonna call that a day I think that we have probably pretty much got what we wanted there if you um, if you wanted to make a invitation or a greetings card or a uh, gift tag, a version of that sort of simplified or made more elaborate depending on what you were going to use it for would work really well. And it's quite fun practicing lots of techniques. Um, and uh, in case I didn't make it clear at the beginning what I was using. I used a number seven draw well nylon brush, just an ordinary bog standard Japanese watercolour brush. 
which you can get from Japan if you want. Um, you can contact them. Uh, the information for connecting uh, with them is in my blog on the website dianeanton.com where you can also download the sketch for this uh, painting if you want to. Um, and um, if you enjoyed this, please give us a like and subscribe. We need your support. Everybody needs support. If they are on YouTube, you wouldn't believe how difficult they make everything for those of us who are crazy enough to be creators on here. It's an interesting way to spend your time. But anyway, I enjoy doing the paintings. I hope you enjoy watching them. Hope you enjoyed this one. And um, see, I'm fiddling now. Am I improving it? Good question. So there's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, I hope you give us a like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get to hear whenever a new video comes up. Also, um, if you want to join the channel, that would be lovely. We would really appreciate your support and you can subscribe for as little as $2.99 a month. Or alternatively, when you go to dianeanton.com and you download one of your several of the selection of wonderful sketches we have over there for you free of charge, you can have as many as you like for zero cost. Um, but we do ask if you feel that you're getting value for money, if you wouldn't mind, and it's totally up to you, there's no obligation, but if you feel that way inclined, we do have a tip uh, jar over there for you to contribute to the running of the studio if you, if you wish. And the running of the studio includes the feeding of the cat, who is, um, yes, always getting in the way. Aren't you, Arthur? Um, lost my thread. Anyway, I think I've said enough. So I look forward to seeing you next time and it's bye-bye from me and bye-bye from Arthur.